we had the opportunity in 2001 to take over the Mayer Healing Centre, the former Mayer Healing Centre. It was an opportunity for VARS to, to continue to be true to the original philosophy of, of Mayer, which is around supporting healing and building resilience and providing a safe space for community to come together. And that's exactly what we did. So we picked up on some family violence related programs and we were able to achieve some funding through the first year of Close the Gap, which enabled us to uh, re-establish Maya Healing Centre as Minanjaku and started with some women's healing programs and some men's healing programs. We were looking at like creating, you know, women's groups, carers groups, you know, and, and all kinds of support groups, you know, I think. And that came out of um, some work that family counselling had done with the family violence group. The women's group actually started through a Victims of Crime project and we were able to set up a, a women's only group uh, supporting women who'd been impacted by family violence. So we ran that as a pilot and it was really successful and we that really instilled in us some confidence that we could do this again. So when we had the opportunity to provide more, more services and more groups at Minanjaku, one of the first things we did was uh, continue with running a women's group. We got women together and we had a yarn, we called it a yarn and session, we had a yarn and session with the women. And we asked them what they wanted, you know, like what would, what did you want in a women's group? How would it look? How would it run? And gave women the power. The women had the power then to create this group to be their own. Everyone brings their own journey, their own experience, and also their own belief of what healing is for them or what would work for them. And I think the health service, because they've had that philosophy of holistic health from the time that the, you know our respected elders sat across the road from where um, Nicholson Street is now and came up with that concept of building their own health service, um, they always spoke about healing playing a really important part in that. It wasn't just the Western medicine way of healing. And, you know, spiritually, we all need to bring something to that. And when you get a group, when you get people sitting around in a group, be it outside or inside or, you know, doing some sort of activity, the strength of when everyone comes together is unbelievable. That is healing within itself. You know, when, you, when you're learning about respecting each other or you are come with very clear knowledge of what respect is, you know, you're giving people the opportunity to do that together in a circle. If they want to come and just sit, have a cup of tea, just to be around other black women, because um, a, lot of, a lot of the women sort of wouldn't move out of the house, didn't do nothing. Stayed at home with their sicknesses, stayed at home with their grief, loss, um, problems with their children, um, drug and alcohol issues. Like, yeah, but just, just come and be around other women and they sort of... They come and that's where we've got the message stick here and it, that gives the women a chance to sit and talk. It had its, um, you know, like ups and downs. It had its growing pains, I suppose, you know, like in terms of what was the group going to be about? What was it going to represent? Was it going to be focused on, you know, like a lot of healing stuff? So was it going to be focused on, I suppose, you know, like we did have a council that was coming along and, and a lot of the groups and we had themes for each group and, and it you know, at some point it went to, it was more like, there was a lot of counselling kind of happening. And, and the women sat back and went, well, this is not what we wanted. We just want to come together, yarn. And, and, and in through that, that we realised that we can heal each other. Um, we didn't need to have a, a, a counsel. A counsel is good to have, and, and, and they're absolutely vital to the group because there are some things that we can't heal. But we learnt from each other that we can heal ourselves and heal each other just by yarn and, and, and listening. We talk all that the spinning circle because it's a women's circle, but we call it the spinning circle because we believe that women can come in and out. So, you know, the, you may, someone comes for a couple of months and then all of a sudden, we don't come back. Two months later, she comes back in the door and it's just like she was never away. And I, and I think that's really um, very important for the way our group welcome each other and make sure. And they, it's also that stuff about, it's not just about this time, in this space, you know, on a Thursday, start at 12, go to 3 o'clock. It's not just about that, because they've built friendships that are after hours. You know, they ring each other, they keep in contact. And every time someone's birthday, we know when everyone's birthday's on and they'll, they'll all put on a birthday party for that person and they will we'll make sure that person has a gift from them. Everybody in the group has that decision-making um, power so they're able to make decisions on yes that will work or no that won't work and that's what the group's about it's not 
us running it. It's not, it's, you know, for me, it's like here we are providing a space, um, you know, for something to come together and work really well. And that's, what, and that's what's happened here. We've been able to provide a space and bring women in and get women to have control over how that runs then and how that works for them. Because it's their own healing journeys, it's not ours, it's not Vaz's, it's not Minajanka's, it's the women's, it's our Aboriginal women's group and it's the community women of this, you know, around and, and all around Melbourne and, and outer regions who need to come in and, and create that space for themselves. In terms of the men's program, it's a very similar model in that we actually help co-facilitate those men's programs that are run every fortnight by one of our counsellors, our Aboriginal psychologist, Graeme Chi, and of course, John Egan. We originally formed the men's group because we felt there was a lack of um, social and cultural support for men who were attending our counselling service. So for social emotional wellbeing issues, for mental health issues, so uh, guys who have, who have struggled with, with long-term mental health. When we set rules and boundaries around the process of doing this, it's, uh, it makes it like uh, bringing back tradition, you know. Uh, how in the old days, how men used to sit around the fire and discuss uh, issues and work things through. The men who are our ancestors have been circling up around fires for thousands of years, so it's just a way to get back to that in a in an urban environment, really. We get a lot of men through all different um, reasons why they're here. Um, some might be a bit of anger, you know, carrying a lot of anger and they can't express um, anywhere else. Like they can't talk to someone about it. If they come in along to the group and they hear someone else talking about it, that sort of thing, oh, okay, if he's talking about it, you know, it opens them up to, to be able to express as well. It's a space where, where you can share and communicate what's going on in your life, you know, how you're feeling, um, you know, you can express yourself um, in terms of, you know, it could be how well you're doing, you know, and really celebrating um, and communicating how well you're doing and, and why, or the opposite, you know, that you're, you're struggling or what have you. So we also see that that basic social support structure is really important for, for men to be able to communicate. The group like this can address a, a whole lot of issues, you know, uh, from domestic violence, uh, suicide, alcohol and drug issues, uh, you know, family support and all those issues. We quite frequently return back to this idea of what are the values of a healthy Aboriginal man. You know, what does that look like in the way we treat our women and our children and each other? When you don't deal with the issues, it just festers inside of you. And then you do, it comes out of you in other ways, as in you abuse or you use or, or um, you get violent, you know, it's, um, it's, it takes all forms uh, when you don't talk about things. One of the challenges of the group is that we found that within two or three hours, uh, it couldn't be everything in that one session because we see what we've learned over time is that there are multiple functions that, that a men's space can have. Um, but, it, you know, it's very difficult for one group to meet all of those. So now we're incorporating on the off week when we don't have the men's group, we're going to have just a completely cultural artefact making program, which we're pretty excited about. Well, I look at it as it takes a big chunk out of your, um, the culture and open old wounds, you know, and tell your story. And when you tell your story, you, um, and cause it's a big cut, you sort of need to grieve, you know, um, and then when you come back week after week and talk about it and healing, and once you heal, it's like uh, you're a new man. A lot of the young men, and they, I get this feedback all the time from the young fellas, they hear from older men who are well, what's working for the older men. You know, they get to hear some of the more experienced men about how they deal with, with um, delicate matters. And, and I've gotten a lot of feedback that they, they love that, that they can come and hear. And we're really, really honest in, in the groups and, and open up about the fact that you know, we may be on top of some things like addiction, what have you, but we might have relationship issues. And we, so we talk about how we, we deal with things. So th there's that whole modeling thing that's going on that I think is um, really, really important for, for the young fellas. You've got to have a healthy mind, you know, and, and it comes by talking and yarning. And uh, 
people you know. We pick particular topics that are important to us um, and those topics cycle around from culture to resilience to um, how we cope with stress or how we're coping with anxiety, what's worked for us, really strength based, you know, when we overcome challenges, sharing what's working for us with other men. It's important to have a place like this for our community because it is one of the few places that exists in the Northern Corridor where so many of our community now live, that people can come in and either just come in, have a yarn, have a cuppa and feel safe, be surrounded by, by culture on every possible wall. So even when you walk into Ninajaka, you instantly feel relaxed, you feel calm and you feel at peace and you feel your identity is affirmed. So the VAR's vision is to inspire healthy and resilient people. The Minajaku vision is to heal the hurts from the past and build and improve the well-being of Aboriginal people, their families, our families and our community.